What to inject first, the filler or PRP? I want to inject fillers in my face. I also want to try PRP, although there is great controversy over its effectiveness. What should I inject first? Also, what should the centrifuge machine be? I heard that the reason some people are not getting good results with PRP is because the machine that centrifuges the blood and prepares the PRP is not good enough to give the right concentration of growth factors. Your advice, please. Thank you for your question. You're asking fillers or PRP which to inject first, and you've gone, gone on to ask about uh, questions about the possible controversies associated with PRP and the, which centrifuge to use. And I think what you're looking for is basically some guidance as to what role fillers and PRP have in facial uh, enhancement. So I could certainly give you some guidance as to how I educate my patients. A little bit of background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon, fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years, helping people look their best through non-surgical facial rejuvenation is something we do every day, and we use a lot of PRP in our practice. So we'll begin with some first understanding some basic principles of what fillers do, what PRP does, and where there may be some potential opportunity for synergy. So to begin with, we'll, st we'll, we'll address what PRP is and what it can do. PRP is platelet-rich plasma. Platelet-rich plasma is derived from your own blood. It is a concentration of the wound healing factors that help improve collagen, blood supply, and a variety of other things that also improve the fat cells under the skin. It's been well established in the medical literature to have value in a variety of situations. And in fact, it's been already significantly well established in oral surgery as well as orthopedic surgery. And in aesthetics, it is becoming more and more recognized. And certainly it's already been proven through very good scientific um, data to, from a microscopic level, the effects of PRP. I think that one of the challenges is that many doctors are never educated and, ne and, and choose not to pursue any knowledge about PRP and are, are quick to dismiss it. Uh, this is a, not an unusual thing when it comes to the medical world. Uh, people who don't know something about, uh, about an area will be often dismissive because they think that if it was significant, they would know it. But the reality is, is that medical education is really often dictated by the messaging of very well-funded, uh, large-scale pharmaceutical companies and uh, device companies. So when it comes to platelet-rich plasma, no, there is no multi-billion dollar company. It's basically a very, a very basic, simple technology that actually uses your own blood and therefore it, the knowledge is actually gained through, uh, through education that the doctor has to pursue and experience that the doctor has to pursue. So it's, it's understandable where the confusion is from, in terms of validity. In terms of uh, equipment, I think it's kind of interesting. It's almost like it's comparable to the way laser companies try to um, prove to a practitioner that one laser is better than another or market to the consumer that a la one laser is better than another. Once again, it's all about the knowledge of the doctor and the way the doctor applies the technology for the benefit of the patient. A lot of times doctors like to uh, advertise or promote and distinguish themselves from the others by saying they have a piece of equipment that other people don't. Well, since most doctors who practice aesthetics can essentially afford to have any piece of equipment they need, centrifuges kind of are, are pretty much on the cheaper end. So it's not exactly for people who own lasers that are worth hundreds and thousands of dollars. It's not a big stretch to go buy a centrifuge. So, it's, so I can tell you that from, a, from an equipment point of view, there's, there, there's a little bit of, uh, you should take that with a grain of salt. 
I can tell you that from, an ex from my personal knowledge and experience of the evolution of PRP for aesthetics, that essentially before it became even somewhat making, uh, bringing aware, broad awareness into the, um, into the United States, or doctors in the United States became more aware of it, PRP was used very frequently for years in South American countries like Colombia. And I can tell you by looking at the, 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 the clinical experience of colleagues from these countries uh, in South America, that the equipment was very, very basic and very straightforward. It's basically like the first um, early articles about PRP was actually in the oral surgery literature where dental implants were actually able to be, to heal better within the mouth when PRP was used. And this was in the late 90s where the centrifuges were even less uh, complicated. So basically if you understand the principle and you have a doctor who has experience with PRP, then certainly there's no reason to get hung up on a particular single piece of equipment. I've used a lot of different kits, I've used many different centrifuges, and I have my own personal biases about how I do PRP and how I prepare PRP. And those are the things that work for me and are effective for my patients. Now, PRP is not a substitute for fillers. PRP can stimulate collagen, can stimulate the fat cells, improve vascularity. So there can be somewhat of a volumizing effect, but it varies. And it, has to, and it cannot be a substitute when you want a more robust volume correction. And that's where fillers play a role. And fillers we use at multiple levels in the face. And starting from the deepest, which we call structural volumizing. This is where we're using a long-lasting filler like Juvederm Ultra Plus or Voluma and we're placing at the deeper levels under the muscles on top of the bone to give you more cheek structure and definition, jawline structure, chin uh, projection. Now this, when you, when you, if you're going to ask which, is, which should you do first, uh, fillers or PRP, well certainly it depends on what you need, but I would suspect if you are dealing with the volume loss issues, Fillers are your foundation. So you can think of it that way, fillers, foundation. Something to restore volume where volume is needed. PRP is a way to restore skin healthiness, quality, glow. In many ways, it's counteracting the natural deterioration of the skin and the soft tissue below the skin. What we, essentially, by stimulating the body to generate increased volume in fat, increased collagen, increased vascularity, you're getting basically something for the more superficial levels, and with the fillers you're getting something in the deeper levels. Now where does the synergy opportunity come in? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples. One is, an exa is when I treat acne scars. Acne scars I'll routinely combine a hyaluronic acid filler as well as PRP to it basically restore volume and in a way synergize to get more permanent correction with this combination. This has already been established in wound healing literature where the combination of PRP and hyaluronic acid actually improved wound healing in exposed bone in, 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 in one particular study I'm thinking of. Now, that, there's another opportunity, for example, in the under eye hollow area, where the tear trough, I'll place a filler like Restylin and then PRP at the, at just under the skin level. Synergy, you're getting volume, you're getting healthier skin, you're getting a global, more youthful appearance. So, I think you need to find, some, uh, find a doctor that you feel really understands your needs before you just commit to just a particular pursuit of one type of solution. A physician's role is to guide you as to first identifying what are the issues that, will, that are most significant for you as well as guide you 
as to the optimal strategies, and usually there are many, many choices. I routinely will ask a patient what their main concern is, and usually their main concern is to look younger, to look more healthy. And then they focus in on a few things that bother them, like a certain lines or jowls or, or, or marionette lines, things like that. But when I, when I, what I do is I'll take their pictures and I'll put them up on the screen and then we'll decide together what makes sense for them. And then we work on a process that fits their time frame and their budget. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.